Ari, let's talk bubble watch because the bubble is very interesting. It's really one spot I feel like we're talking about at this point. Everybody else feels pretty locked in. We've got some win and end games. Mm -hmm. Got the Big 12 championship between Iowa State and Arizona State that is a definite win and end game. Got the ACC championship between Clemson and SMU that may or may not be a win and end game. And it definitely is for Clemson, but we don't know if it will be for SMU. And then we've got all those teams just sitting there, Alabama, Ole Miss, South Carolina, Miami, going, what happens to us? What what happens now? What does the committee do? Yeah, so the bubble watch, and this is kind of funny because you do bracketology every week. I do bubble watch every week. And like for the first two months of the season, you're over there somewhere. I'm over here somewhere. Yeah. And as the results pile in, like we get beer closer and closer yeah. together. And it's like yesterday or this morning when we were doing this, we were doing the same exact thing. Yeah. Now, the, um, where we differ a little bit is in results of conference championship games. And let's let's start with the who might make this out of the group of five, because I think that's really interesting. Because yeah. You have UNLV beating Boise State on the blue, which. If you watch the first game between these two, which was a great game, this is a definite possibility. Boise State is not a lock to win the Mountain West championship here. I have been wrong about a lot of things this year. And, you know, you can keep score of that. It's a lot. I've been right about a few things, and I've been on the Notre Dame bandwagon all year. Yep. And I've also been on the UNLV. Don't forget about UNLV, like pounding the fist on the table about, like, do not forget about UNLV. Like, if you've watched them play, and you have quite a bit. Ajah Malik Williams, They're baby. a very good football team. Oh, yeah. Not just, like, they didn't just lose. No, they, they, they don't have, like, a, it's not just, like, a gimmicky offense. Like, the, yeah. the go-go offense is fun to watch. But they also play good defense. Yeah, like this is a, a and they have a receiver teams. that's literally in my top ten yeah, for Ricky my Heisman White. ballot. Yeah. Like they have and who blocks punts. Like they do stuff. And my opinion has always been that it's very difficult to beat the same team twice in the same season. Yeah. And also, Boise isn't playing like murder ball right now. Right, Ashton so, Gentry uh, is, is still really good, but it, he's not completely annihilating opponents like he was at the beginning. Yeah, of the I mean season. he's getting to two hundred yards, but he's also carrying it thirty six times a game. So like. If UNLV can design a defense, having some experience, having played them already once to fall mm -hmm. back on, here's what worked, here's what didn't. And they made it hard on Ashton Genty. He got his 100, yeah. 148 yards yeah. or so, but it it, it was they, a lot they of played work. played him tough. Yeah. yeah. Now, it is on the road. In the Mountain West, if you don't understand this, they the, the, the higher seed hosts the game. Yeah, so, so it's not in a dome somewhere. It's in Boise on the blue turf. So that might make it difficult. And... But the, the spread's four and a half, so I think that there's a, a potential there for UNLV to get this done. Um, if they, and I, I, don't, I wouldn't bet my life on that or anything, but well, like, I feel it's, like it's that, interesting because it 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 affects seating in a big way. I think because yeah. if you look at where the committee has Boise State right now, they're number eleven in the current committee rankings. I suspect they're going to move up one as Miami falls in in the next ranking. So they're probably going to come into that at number ten in the committee rankings, and right now. Arizona State and Iowa State, the two teams playing the Big 12 championship game, are 16 and 18. I don't think either one of them is going to jump Boise State if Boise State beats a good UNLV team, which, by the way, the committee also has ranked. Yeah, so yeah, they'd be adding a ranked win. Yeah, so I think if Boise State wins this one, Boise State is your four seed at worst. They might be the three seed, depending on if Clemson beats SMU in the ACC title game. Yeah, so that's why I did that, um, and... There will ha also maybe be a debate because if Boise wins, they're just in and there's no discussion. Right. But if UNLV wins, they might be compared to Army if Army beats Tulane mm -hmm. and Army's would be a one loss team that only lost another playoff team and UNLV has two losses. So there is still a, a slim path, I think, for for Army to get yeah. into this thing. If And I, I mean, I still don't think that they would win that battle. I, I think that UNLV the, the would way Army lost to Notre Dame yeah. is tough. And and UNLV's two losses are a close loss to Boise State and a very close loss to Syracuse. Yeah, which also looks better now because Syracuse they beat, beat Miami. Miami. Yeah, and they have two, I believe, two wins over power teams too. Right, they beat resume. they they so, shut out uh, Houston and they beat Kansas, which the Kansas win looks better now too. Yeah, the 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 thing about this is, I just think it's crazy how much it can swing, based on who went whether Boise State or UNLV wins this game because. If you're the Big 12 champ, you'll know who won the Mountain West championship. 
Yeah. You, you, I don't think you'll know who won the American Championship yet. I believe yeah, I that's on Saturday. I so, don't know. yeah. So, and the Big 12 Championship is first on Saturday. They're, it's their early game. So, we won't quite know yet, but that they could be playing for the four seed or actually, I mean, the eight, because the ACC Championship could, I think if SMU, win, let, let's say this if SMU wins the ACC Championship, they're the three seed. If Clemson wins the ACC Championship, four seed or the 12 seed or the 12 seed right yeah i i still think that we're overthinking that a little bit okay I, I, arizona I, I state or or a three loss clemson who's ranked higher um i don't feel passionate about that one way or the other but that's the thing that's too power if, if the committee doesn't feel passionate about it either and they rank arizona state higher than clemson clemson's the 12 but i think in that, that scenario i think that my prediction this is the first time we've done this. We don't know. It'll yeah. be that whoever wins the Big 12 will be ranked higher than whoever wins the G5 spot. Uh, you're wrong. Yeah, uh, we'll see. You, so they're going to they're gonna jump that team five to six spots over Boise State if Boise State and wins. You just got done telling me in the last video that they just do whatever they want at the end of the year. Like you're trying to use rationality. Right they now. do, but like they, they they've, they've, I yeah, think they've painted themselves into a corner here. If Boise State wins, Boise State is going to be the three or the four seed. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're right. Um I just like have gone under the assumption of like they treat group of five teams a certain way and they always have, but and, they're not uh, like, look, look at the rankings now. Where's Boise on Tuesday. They were 11. They were 11. Yeah. Arizona state was 16. Between 11 Iowa and state was 18 for, six days, for, for four weeks now. Yeah. Like they so don't Arizona they state don't is suddenly going to be number 10. If they win, I put, I put them on 10 of my poll. Not it, that it matters, but yeah. What did you put them last week? Uh, like 18 or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm not rewarding uh i'm not rewarding three loss sec teams because they're in the SEC. we're not talking about those we're talking yeah. about a one loss boise state yeah i mean what you're saying makes rational sense i get it okay i i just like i don't let's explain the army part because yeah. i think people don't understand that if boise state loses not any other scenario if boise state wins they're in yeah it's over if boise state loses there is going and, and then our, if Army beats Tulane, which by the way Tulane is favored in the American Championship game. Yeah. If Army beats Tulane, there will be a discussion between Army and UNLV for the 12 seed. Yes. I do not know who will get it. I think it would be UNLV. I picked UNLV because they've got wins over power teams and they did not lose by 40 to Notre Dame. Like I thought that the two, the combination of resume wins, which are important, and the fact that they didn't get embarrassed in the only time they played a team that's in this picture yeah. i think is going to win that battle now let's talk about it would be pretty crazy though if there was an option team in the playoff though wouldn't it It would be so much fun it would be so Imagine, much like, fun. army going to alabama in the first <laughs> <laughs> it <would> be amazing <laughs> all right so speaking of alabama they are a bubble team ole miss is a bubble team south carolina is a bubble team miami's a bubble team you mm -hmm. have them as your first four out those four and those are the only four i mean i think that south carolina is eliminated so they're not in the discussion because they have head-to-head -head yeah. losses to ole miss and alabama yeah and i think that miami is basically eliminated why but not a hundred percent why uh because i agree with you that they will rely on who you beat and miami has beaten nobody that's i i yeah i i'm just trying to get the explanation out yes. there. i'm not disagreeing with ari on this i i, I but miami is more alive than south carolina because there's still a 10 and 2 team South Carolina is a nine and three team in their two of their three losses are to teams that are also in the conversation. They're, they're in they're the same out. little, like, yeah, there's no, with them. and like, there's no more games left to like help them. Like a lot happened for them to be this close. Yeah. This past weekend, or the past two weeks, but like, there's no, you couldn't even dream up a path where they get into me. So, so they, I think they are just out the way um, you've got it is Clemson beating SMU. Yes. You just, because I, I you just immediately throw SMU into that 11 seed. My, thought process was that i would put smu there or i think that they're going to do that i don't think the committee will do that i think they but, will pick alabama or Ole yes. Miss in there and also too like if you're right least shocking thing in the world like i'm not i'm not yeah. gonna bang my fist against yeah. the table my whole thought is in what you said about the fpi and andy did this exercise too and he came down on a different side of this makes sense like, I, th I, I think i think they're I think overly we, reliant I, on predictive power rankings which love alabama the thing I just and like Ole Miss better. Don't know is we know the FPI rankings than, than the other. Team. I don't know what the hypothetical spread between Bama and SMU would be. 
like maybe Bama would be favored, but like if it's a field goal or something, then like I don't think it would be a huge spread. Although I didn't think Alabama Auburn would be that big of a spread last week, and it was, and Alabama covered it because this isn't just an Alabama right. team who yeah. played a really tough schedule and lost a few games, but is still like really right. Dangerous. Right. This is a this, this is, is a, a non scary Alabama. This is a potentially team. bad off. If you, like if, yes. if they're on the if they get there on the wrong day, they could be terrible and lose. So, I, so. so my thought is that the committee isn't just going to blanketly assume like they have in the past. And I have in the past and you have in the past that Alabama is just better than SMU. Cause I think that would be a mistake. I think Alabama is inherently deeply flawed team, but they're, they're all deeply Saban's flawed, and- inherently deeply flawed. And that's why they're here. and not definitely in the playoff. And that's- but I think SMU's resume has less warts on it. Now it doesn't have as many like, like we've seen Alabama be embarrassing this year. Right. Nothing and, and we don't know how SMU Yeah, SMU has not been they embarrassing. They haven't been at all. embarrassing. So yeah. like they did beat Georgia though. So it's like, what do you pick? Do you pick the team that's been embarrassing but has been great at times, or do you pick the team that has never embarrassed anybody? That has one fewer loss and play and one of that loss came in a game that Alabama didn't have to play in. Now like, I, I like would they argue played that- one extra game and have one fewer loss. Yeah. Like that has to matter. And also, too, my thing is. And I can tell you, do you think less of SMU if they lose to Clemson? Yeah, we would get more information, but Clemson got throttled by Georgia and lost to South Carolina at home. Of course, of course. Yeah, no, I'm with you. But having one fewer loss in one bigger in one more game and not going to Oklahoma and not scoring a touchdown doesn't exist on their resume. Right. And the second part of this this is what I firmly believe. This is the this is the real motivation for me, because I do believe you and agree with you with the FPI and predictive, you know, hypothetical lines and all that stuff is that I think that the Alabama Ole Miss discussion is so close that they are indistinguishable. And you're like, well, they have to make a decision. And I, how I agree with you. How and, do you make that decision? Well, and we talked about this in the bracketology video. Like my personal preference between those two would be Ole Miss. Cause like also too, like, cause F- I think their top end is better than Alabama's, FBI, top end. Alabama's FPI is four and Ole Miss, Ole Miss is, is, eight. is eight. Like yeah. is that negligible? Right. Like there's nothing, there's yeah. no difference. Yeah. I like personal preference. I would go with Ole Miss because I think their top end is better than Alabama's top end. But so what if the committee, like half the room's like, you gotta like, first of all, I don't think that there's anybody who watches the sport every day. Who's going to be banging their fists on the table for Alabama this year. Like they're not a good team in comparison to what they've been in the past. They have the same helmets and the same uniforms and play in the same stadium. They are not that. Half the room is Alabama. Half the room is Ole Miss. They're screaming and fighting with each other. You and I watch football so every you day think of our that, lives. You think they'll just be like, well, we can't split we can't the baby. Split we're going yeah, we're, we're to go like with TCU SMU. And Baylor in I think they'll flip a freaking coin and pick Alabama or Ole Miss. Yeah. Uh, but also, too, like one of my saucy tanks at the beginning of the year that enraged you is that this is not going to be settled on the field. That is not settling it on the field. That is, is bullshit. It is most certainly <laughs> yeah. not settling yeah, it on the is, field. That but, is, but that's then, the most, that would be the most egregious decision the committee would have had to make since last year or two. No, it, no, it's not because it's, for, it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's for the 11 seed. Yeah. And we, we, we can say so the stakes are lower. Therefore, it's, it's an, not because it's still a all of those decision. teams could have just won more games. But it's still and a nonsense fixed everything. decision. It's a it's a complete hypothetical yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, bullshit nonsense. It's a position. nonsense sport. Get used to it. Um. So, but that's why I have put SMU there, and I think you're going to see Andy. Like, I'm not going to be the only idiot out there that has SMU in the field with a loss. Oh no, like, you all of you Pollyannas yeah. are going to do that. Yeah, and then you're going to be like, "What does that word mean? I don't know what that means." You just think the best of people. You assume the best. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, no, that. but uh, but reality is going to slap you in the face on Sunday. But I also I'm a very pessimistic person when it comes to like how the committee works. But th- and like if here's the thing, and I'll make an admission here: if Ole Miss would have lost the Egg Bowl, mm-hmm. I would have put Alabama in. Right, I think that, there's, I think no, that Ole, there's no comparison between. I think that that, point. that that Ole Miss's existence is a blocker of at least. Uh, see, I don't 10%. think so at all. There, there's at least a marginal block. There. I think these two are better than these other two. But because I have to pick between these two, I'm going to take this other one. I mean, no, that's a, that's silly. That's not going to happen. We have the benefit of hindsight right now. But I covered the 2014 thing. It was not certain going into Selection Sunday that Ohio State was what it ultimately. It was for became. people with eyes, but like, but like I remember where I was. Yeah, when the bracket was well, it, it, it and never, there was a lot of doubt on who it had never happened before. To. Nobody, they'd never yeah. had a final ranking before, but. Anybody who do you think I'm overthinking that then? You yes. Think, you don't think that like indistinguishable teams yes. cancel each other what out? What you just said, if Ole Miss had lost the Egg Bowl, you, you'd say Alabama's in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, or I think that's what I would have done. Yeah. 
the committee's going to think Ole Miss and Alabama are better than a two loss SMU that lost to Clemson. They're going to choose between Alabama and Ole Miss. Yeah. But if, and like I said during your video, if you are right and you might be right, I wouldn't go wagering a bunch of money that you're wrong. Because Alabama, I think in the actual betting odds, is like a favorite to make it. Well, so, like, yeah. so I'm with, like, I understand and the thing what is, you're doing. The thing is, Alabama could could get into the playoff as the 11 seed, go on the road and lose by three touchdowns. But that like, it is entirely possible. That I think would be complete anarchy. Like, I think people would go absolutely. But what berserk. if what if they went on the road and won? What if they went to South Bend and beat Notre Dame? My response as a rational person would be, Ole Miss would have beaten them too. Like, I, I still think that, like... But, but to see, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, that's the assumptions that we're used to making. We don't know. Like, it's going to be whatever it's going to be that day. Like, all of these teams are flawed. But you do know that Twitter is going to explode. Of course. It's going to explode any way you do it. Yeah, I guess. That is the point. Yeah. I don't... I, I, like, all of you people who think... I'm a you people. Yeah. <laughs> all of you people who think that they did this to avoid controversy... Do you understand that the controversy is part of the thing? It is part of the attraction. You do understand now that we're in the eye of the storm here that like half the sales pitches for the beauty of the 12 team playoff beforehand are like not true at all. That's for idiots okay. who, who cling yeah, to the four saying, team like, or the old bull system. No, but I'm just like, saying like all the, the, the features that we were supposed to get, which is settled on the field and all that stuff is just complete nonsense. Well, like, no is, shit. They still actually, have a committee. What did you think was going to happen? This is like complete nonsense. Uh, what did you think was going to happen when when you saw they still had a hope committee? Is that, my hope is that they'll put the team with fewer losses in. Why? And, why is fewer? Like, why does why the loss column matter so much? Is it not possible that a team that played a harder schedule with more losses is better than a team that played an easier schedule? I would with buy that losses? if the losses on that harder schedule weren't to dog shit teams. Like that's the thing. Like they, it's not like they have more losses because they lost to Georgia. Is Texas. Northern Illinois? No, I know, but okay. that happened once, not three times. Like it's okay. like more is worse. <laughs> like, but what do you Notre want Dame to didn't that? play anybody that good. But Notre Dame also played dog crap teams for the rest of the year and didn't lose again. They right. kept losing to but bad they didn't teams. Beat anybody good? Like I, I, I understand like the strength of schedule. Alabama thing, and like, Ole Miss beat somebody. If good. Alabama's three losses were Georgia, Texas, and Ole Miss. Then we wouldn't be talking. They got their dicks kicked in right. by Ole Miss, right? But if I mean by Oklahoma on did, the road. But they did beat Georgia. They yeah. did. This is you so know who crazy. didn't beat a team as good but, as Georgia? Yeah, Notre Dame, Indiana, Penn State, and like I don't even like I'm like arguing with you, and I don't even disagree with you. Like I know because you just like I'm just. Trying. I you just, ju you just it's nonsense though. You you it's, it's you want to be right about the twelve team playoff. You're hilariously wrong. This is going to be fun. People will get mad. So, that's part of the point. I'm so past that, Andy. I promise you, that's not a motivation of my opinions. No, like, I'm not. It, I, you, it, it is what it is. You're like people are going to get mad about that. Who cares? I but oh, can I ask it this way? Let yeah. me. I, I'm going to do like verbal gymnastics with you. Go for it. Um, hold on, let me limber up. Do you think it would be cleaner <laughs> if they picked SMU? I don't care. No, I'm just answer it though. Like, no, you, I think it'd be. I, I think a bunch of people would go crazy because they'd be like, "Why'd you pick the team that would lose to these other two teams?" Yeah, I think it would be cleaner. Who cares? It's not supposed to be clean. Yeah, this is the dirtiest, messiest sport. They have a freaking committee that votes on things, and then one person stands up and pretends they speak. I mean, for the it's going to be great for us because like, we're going to have a live show after the exactly so it, it, it is going to so be quit, pandemonium. Quit, quit poking the golden goose. Sorry. So like what? But like, what am I? So what are we rooting? For? We wait. We need Clemson to lose. Uh, Clemson losing, I think, creates a little more chaos in that spot in that last. Oh, spot. Yeah. oh because, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because well, no, actually, Clemson winning creates it can, it more creates chaos because then you have an actual team. Then you that's throw out SMU into it. That's true. To, I think that Clemson winning makes it worse. That's true because Clemson wouldn't be in the mix for that at large, but SMU. But my would. assumption all morning until I came into this beautiful Fairfield in Waco, Texas hotel room was that SMU would probably get in. And like you're like convincing me that it, it won't happen that yeah, way. Yeah. And so, that, that, and that's, that's probably, again, it's a committee, there's a room full of people. You're gonna have that one angry juror or two angry jurors who are like, no, and it's probably gonna be on both sides of it. There's probably gonna be one person that's going, no, it's gotta be SMU, and there's a, no, it's gotta be Ole Miss. Like that's what's going to happen, and it's why I wish they would televise the I deliberations. Just, the one thing that I will, I just take exception to, to the core of my of my plums, 
is that when you screamed in my face just now, and I, I thought that was cute, uh -huh. I'm working you up on Sunday morning. I've had a really long night, guys, for for reasons I'm not going to tell you. But uh, uh, I'm going to tell you, he bought a gas station <laughs> sandwich at 1 a.m. He could have bought some beef jerky and been perfectly fine. He's like, I know. I will buy this sandwich that was probably prepared by it. someone on meth I 17 had... hours ago, and it's been sitting on this shelf. What could go wrong? It was the only thing that was a meal that was in the gas station. It doesn't have to be a meal. I know, but I hadn't had dinner. Pick I didn't, the safer I didn't, thing. I didn't eat the barbecue sandwich that you had in the press box, and I had I was hungry. I haven't I hadn't eaten in like so eight eat hours. some gummy bears or some beef jerky. At least there's some standards in the production. So anyway, yeah, I've had a I got sick last night. So, and so you um, you trust this man to pick your bracket? Yeah, he can't even pick a sandwich. I'm a I'm a I'm a raccoon. <laughs> But what you did say, though, and I like fundamentally just think it's different this year is if you pick SMU, people are going to go. And I quote, we're going to go nuts because you're picking the team that we know would lose to the other two. Well, we and don't I just know. That. Don't think we can do that. We don't year. know. That. That's all. And I'm just trying to say, like, I, I, I'm with you. I think I'm I on think, your side. I think there will be. And, and I hope there are people in the room stumping for smu in that situation but i hope they think that way because i am not certain that smu could not beat those teams in fact i'm not certain I, I think either, it would but, be a great game but but two years thing. ago i would have thought that both smu and ole miss with these players all would beat of, the crap them, out of them one of them is going to get in the other one's going to be left out and all of them that are left out you know what they they should have done one more games yeah problem solved it's like it, at the end of the road it's going to be whatever they do is not going to be just but at the same time if you got screwed, you only have yourself to blame. Exactly. So, like, and I think that's kind of it's, it's like going, when you so. buy the gas station sandwich at 1 a.m. Yeah, you only I mean. have yourself to blame.